Joining us now for more analysis is chemical weapons expert Al Moroni. He is the director of the U.S. Air Force Counter Proliferation Center. He joins us via Skype from the Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to get your thoughts. Syria has now signed on to this chemical weapons declaration. It is a big step forward. But in your opinion, what are the biggest challenges in terms of actually moving forward with locating and destroying Syria's chemical weapons stash? Well, one of the key points is that the Chemical Weapons Convention, being a diplomatic arrangement, uh, has to do a lot with trust in each other. Uh, obviously, there may be concerns with uh, trustworthiness uh, between the uh, Syrian government and the United States and other nations. But uh, as far as verification, you have to put some of the onus on the nation that is uh, accurately reporting what it has on chemical weapons. In addition to moving the chemical weapons to a place where they'll be disposed, there's also the concern about addressing the production buildings where the chemical weapons were produced and the chemical agent was produced. It's not just the munitions, but we... Also, by the terms of the Chemical Weapons Convention, you need to take down the production facilities as well as the formerly used sites. Uh, all of these will be terms that will have to be dictated and developed between the negotiators and the Syrian government. So this seems like an enormous task that needs to be uh, looked at here and coming up with that process. So in your opinion, how long does a process like this take, not just the negotiations, but actually going in, finding these stockpiles, dismantling them, and making sure more weapons are not created in Syria? Well, there are no guarantees. And I think one of the points is that we won't be going in to move anything. It, I think a great deal is going to rely on the Syrian government moving the weapons and having monitors along the process. Uh, there are provisions within the Chemical Weapons Convention to challenge uh, cases that where we think that the Syrian government or another government may be hiding something. But again, a lot of this is depending on what the Syrian government gives us. How long this will take, it could take uh, anywhere from two to five years, depending on the quantity of the agent involved and what form that it's in. If it's in bulk containers of precursor chemicals, that's a little bit easier to handle than filled munitions. So yep. a lot of the details will come out. Now, we know in Libya and even in Iraq, the U.S. or the U.N. was involved in destroying and locating chemical weapons there. In your opinion, how do these situations compare to Syria? Are they comparable or does Syria present uh, more or unique challenges? Well, obviously, the unique challenge is the civil war that's going on in Syria. Even in Libya, I think the honest examination of the Libyan chemical weapons wasn't until after hostilities ended, and similarly with the Iraq. Obviously, as long as there's a conflict in Syria, there's no chance that any chemical weapons will be moved or disposed of. Uh, and that, that's something that the diplomats are going to have to wrestle with. If the rebels are willing to cease fire for a short period of time to move the munitions, it could happen very quickly. Otherwise, uh, Assad's perfectly within his rights to say, hey, I have a security problem here. It's probably not wise to move chemical weapons in the middle of a firestorm. Uh, yep. So, it, again, this is something for the diplomats. Certainly, uh, you've pointed to one of the big issues, and that is trust. A lot of this hinges on trust in Russia, and even more so trust in the Syrian government, a regime that uh, has been publicly declared by President Obama and many other world leaders as not having any confidence. And, uh, you know, there is no public trust, it seems. So at this point, what do you make of these negotiations? Syria signaled it wants 30 days before it'll share information on its stockpiles. The U.S. is saying, no way, it wants to speed up the timeline. So what do you make of the process of the, of the negotiations and where we are right now? This is kind of a unique situation. I think everyone will uh, admit to it. Uh, but when you look at the, the negotiations, Libya, uh, we started talking to Libya in 2003, 2004. We are still not done destroying their chemical weapons. Uh, this is not a, we, there'll be demands going back and forth as a routine part of diplomacy. Uh, I'm not a diplomat. So I can't fully comment on that, but I, I think this is just par for the course. This is the opening dance, if you will. Uh, it's going to be a long process. I don't think in 30 days we're going to be safer uh, from Syrian chemical weapons, but there'll be rules put in place. The opening parts of the negotiation will take form, 
and we'll be able to see if we can have some good discussions. Uh, but it, it, it'll take a little bit longer to figure out exactly what time frame we're talking about. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now, but I want to thank you so much, Mr. Maroney, for joining us today with your thoughts and your insight into the situation. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That is the director of the U.S. Air Force Counterproliferation Center, Al Maroney, joining us from Alabama via Skype. Okay.